G'day, welcome to Art with Alison. Today I'm going to be doing a, a straight pour on a 16 by 16 inch canvas and this is inspired by Sarah Mack who, yeah, she just does such wonderful pours. And, all right, so colours. This is a mixture of warm blue, cool blue and a little bit of black. And I've actually also got mixed in with this some deco art satin enamel in the, uh, I think it's called dark navy or deep navy. And just pour a little bit of this into the bottom. Just want the middle to be darker rather than lighter. And I might actually follow that with some deep sapphire which is deco art extreme sheen so that will be two dark colors together and then I'll have some this is a 24k gold by deco art this one I've got very thick this is about one part, one part flow troll to three parts paint, which is quite the opposite of most pouring ratios. But I find that keeping this extra thick really helps to achieve what I'm after, which is to get the lovely cells. And also hopefully maybe some actual lines in the gold. And now I'm going to add white. This is just British Paints has paint mixed with Floetrol. All my paints are mixed with Floetrol. And I mix them to get the consistencies that I want. So this is fairly thick. Man on a man leaves a trace for a little while. So this pour is going to be basically in blues and aquas. And then I'm going to have this here is Cobalt Blue by Eraldo. So you can see lovely, you know, fairly thick and luscious mixed again. Yeah, they're all mixed with Floetrol. No oils of any sort or even water in any of our mixes. I mix them down with the flow troll to get the consistencies that I'm after. And I might go for a little bit of gold again. The main reason I, I think that I'm not using water is because I like to make up my pots of paint and leave them sealed for some time this year is deco art extreme sheen in the sapphire oh, i can't remember if i told you the other color the other one was deco art and deep sapphire I might have got that wrong this is the deep sapphire and this is sapphire this one here is it's scooped up paint from previous pores and it's made this beautiful deep rich sort of metallic deep rich green so I thought this would work well. It's sort of a, a deep turquoise, actually. A little bit of bluish in there. So as I was saying, I like to make up my paints some time in advance, and because I, yeah, I, yeah, my previous one of my previous pours, I explained I. I suffer with pain issues and I get uh, can't do too much at once. So if I have these all made up previously, then I can do my painting with that, yeah, from fresh. And I find that when it's, okay, this year is Eraldo turquoise. I find when the paints are mixed only with Floetrol, they keep like 
well, pretty much forever so far I've found. But ones that I've put water in, they go very watery, you know, like extra watery, and yeah, they don't seem to keep so well. So, yeah, I actually heard Molly from Molly's Artistry explain once she's a I think it's a chemist or a, or a pharmacist. Anyway, she knows all about the chemistry of things. And she was explaining how Floetrol and water simply don't mix, that they repel each other. And I think that's the reason why it's not a good idea to have them mixed up and left, that they're, they're just not going to be happy living together in the same space. So. Yeah, but I guess if you're going to be mixing up your paint and using it all up on the same day, then there's absolutely no problem whatsoever to add water to thin down your paints. I haven't heard anyone else saying it's a problem. So yeah, let me know actually. Yeah, tell me how you've gone with how you mix your paints, I'd love to know, and how, you know, if you put them into storage, how you've gone with them keeping. I, I guess also in Western Australia here where I live, we have usually a fairly dry climate, it's not humid. I know someone was suggesting in one of the comments that I should put Dettol in them to stop them going mouldy and I was like mm -mm, none, of mine have, none of mine have ever gone mouldy but then I thought well maybe it's because we really don't get much mould here you know sometimes in the bathroom if you've not had it well ventilated you might get some mould growing but yeah it's not an issue really because it's generally such a dry climate here so we don't really get much mould and whereas maybe if you're living in a in a climate that's very humid then you know where there's a lot of mold growing around even though you I'm sure you've been keeping everything clean but mold being mold it loves to keep growing all over the place and mold has little tiny spores like they're microscopic you can't see them and they float around in the air, which is why mould tends to go everywhere, is because, well, it's a dog snoring, <laughs> snorting. If you've got mould somewhere nearby, then it's going to, yeah, end up getting into everything. So I guess if you do live in a, in a climate that is humid, and that, or, or at least where you get mould growing, then you probably would do best what this person commented saying to put some sort of disinfectant in with your paw. I don't know how it would mix, I've never done it, but this person seemed to think it was a good idea. He said he suggested putting Dettol in. So it's something to consider if you are going to store your paints. But yeah, again, let me know your experiences, how you've gone at storing your paints, if they've lasted. And obviously they need to be kept in a container that can be sealed shut. And all these containers have lids, so, and it's great, and I can, you know, write on the lids, you know, write on them like this is Araldo turquoise with flow trolls, so I know that's what that paint is. So I you know, try and remember to do that whenever I mix up a new batch of paints to write on them so then I at least know what it is that's in the... Occasionally I come across a pot that hasn't got, got anything written on it and I go, oh, what was that? But usually, oops, there's a lump of something there. Usually they're the ones that um, I've scooped up because, again, yeah, I like to scoop up you know, when you do your pour and you end up with lots of paint around, it just seems such a waste just to throw it all away. And I know that, especially with this pour, it's going to be basically blues and aquas. I'm going to end up with a lovely blue mix, so I'm going to be able to 
scoop that up without any problem. Look at that white sinking. Um, and be able to use it again in another pour. Same as that, or where is it? That deep green over there that I'm using in this one. Yeah, it's beautiful. I mean, what, what a waste to just have thrown that away. I mean, there's lots of other ideas to do. I've got quite a few videos now and another one coming up soon on what to do with your poured off paint. You know, I, I'll dip glass domes, which are called cabochons, into it to make some jewellery, which sells quite well in the local art and craft shop. I also dip cardboard, you just get, you know, it's just, obviously the, this, what I'm suggesting now is not for long term, but if you want to make someone a, a thank you card or something, you can just dip some cut off cardboard, you know, as in the cardboard that you get from, say, your cereal packet, just cut that up into the size that you want and then dip that in and pull it up and you can end up with some lovely uh, shapes and colours. I've done some videos on that and I've, I think I did one recently that I'm going to be doing. And what else do I do? Um, Oh, coasters. Yeah, just get some small, small, I use the small canvas boards, the four inch by four inch boards, and you can dip them in your paints and get some, oh, yeah, I just recently did that. I'll be putting that up on a video. Um, they come up beautifully just into your poured off paint and also, what I have been doing recently is in your, you know, sometimes you end up with a little bit left in your cup that you didn't use. And I've been like doing a tiny weeny straight pour into, onto one of those little canvases and um, sometimes I do like a ribbon pour and they come out looking really pretty. So I've just you know, done, a, done a little video on that. So I'll put that together one of these days and you can see what I mean. And yeah, I'm still researching a good spray varnish to varnish them with that's heat resistant. And hopefully I'll have one soon because there's no point in a coaster if you can't put a hot cup of coffee on it. So hey guys if you know of a good spray paint or even a, a varnish that is heat resistant to 100 degrees Celsius please let me know because I've now got lots of coasters that need need to be varnished. I don't want to resin them. I, I know lots of people use resin. I've not yet used resin Somehow that frightens me. I'm sure it's not frightening once you know what you're doing. But for the time being, I just would be happy to spray paint them, please. <laughs> anyway, let me know, please, what you, if you know of anything that works, I'd love to know. Well, I think that's full. This was an eight ounce cup down to there, so it's probably about 10 ounces that I've got in there now. I'll clear all this away and back with you in just a tick. All right, so I hope that's on an angle that you like. It's hard to position it. I, don't, I need to get a proper um, tripod. It would be useful. Uh, but so far I haven't got one, so it's just 
up on boxes and things. So it's not very easy to manoeuvre and change. But hopefully this will work because you'll be able to see as the paint goes in. All right, so that what I just put in there is the same as I've got in the cup, which is the uh, it's cool blue, dark blue, and a little bit of black mixed with Floetrol, and then and then actually there was one third of Decoart satin enamel in the. Uh, let's see if I've got it written here. No, I didn't write it down, but it's the. I think it's deep blue or warm blue, I don't know, in the uh, satin enamel. So, yeah, I'm not sure if it'll help make a cloudy effect or not. I don't think so, but anyway, we shall see if it makes any difference at all. And then I'm going to use this here is some mixed paint for, that I've scooped up from another pour, which is similar to the colours that I'm using, but it's more runny, so I'll show you that. So this is a lot more runny. Oh, can you see that? So I'm going to use that to go around the around the outside once I've finished pouring. The reason for that is to help your paint to just to, to spread rather than if it catches on the canvas on the edges, it, it just continues to roll over and you lose your your paint composition basically so that's the reason we do this is to help the paint to move all right I think I might have too much paint here but never mind as I said before I can scoop it up and use it again get it in the middle I'm trying to watch what the cup's doing. I'm trying to centre that up as well as watching the canvas. What's going on down there? Oh, that was a lump of something. Stop it there because it's yeah. Mm, not sure about that centre at all. Mm. But the good thing about this type of art, don't fret. If it turns out not being something that you like, you can pour over it. It does. I mean a lot of paint, but yeah, it's strange how we've got like the white bits here, but not on that side. So I was trying to get the, the cup to, as I was pouring it to be even, but it was, I know it was becoming difficult. All right, so I'll now give this a torch. Not to pop any air bubbles. Most of the paint, as I said before, was made up previously, but some of them added a bit of extra to, so it didn't make me making a bit more bubbles. It also helps the different colours to come up and make cells. The paint has different densities, so some some um, pigments are heavier than others and so some will sink and some will rise, which is why you get these cells popping through. Right, there's some snoring dogs around me. 
some of them are quite loud. I breed Labradors, so yeah, and they all, they're all house pets. They're all part of my family, even though I've got lots of them. Some people think I'm a bit mad, but I'm a crazy dog lady. But I'm happy. I love living with dogs. They are good company. Ooh, that was rather a lot. And where's my spatula? Not, not spatula. Palette knife. I'm not cooking. I'm painting. It's always handy to keep a damp cloth nearby for your painted fingers. Even though they're just going to get painted again, but especially if you want to point to something in the canvas, <laughs> you don't want to drip. Right, so I'm enjoying these. I don't know if you can see from there. I think you can. These, I think it's from the sapphire and the deep sapphire. Got these lovely wispy bits coming through here. I should have, I can see now, I should have put more white. The white's kind of disappeared. I was hoping to contrast these dark colours with white, but the white has all sunk to the bottom, it seems. Uh, that's interesting. Almost looks like a silver spot there. Strange. Maybe it's white, it just looks silver in this angle. <coughs> I've still got a bit of a cold, so if my voice sounds funny, that's why. Uh, I'm sure it always sounds funny. <laughs> anyway, um, all right, let's do this. That's your might. I can see I'm not that happy still with that center. Where's my little skewer gone? Might just, if I lean my arm on something, I might have more control. Just gonna see if I can pull that bit of white around, just that little bit there, may or may not help. All right, so let's do this. Stretch it from side to side. Up and down. That might be a little bit too fast. Now head down to that corner. I might just let it hook over. Gold if I can. Bring it back. Try not to drip it all over me. Actually, I might see how. Do I want? I might. Yeah, just try and catch a little bit of that gold over. Maybe. Take it down there. And this let a little bit of that go over. Yeah, just a bit more. I don't want to lose it all because it's very pretty, but that's helping to stretch it out by catching it on the, on the sides there. It helps to grab it and then it stretches out. I hope that makes sense. 
and then this side here. Bring that over. Might just let that go a tiny bit more. Maybe that's done. Let me see. Yes, I think that will do. I might I'm not I don't really want it completely in the middle like that, so I'm just going to get it to go down a little bit. Meanwhile stretching out these bands up here. We'll see how that goes. Actually I might let it go down and then bring it back again to also stretch out the bands down the bottom. I might just let that go over a little bit more down there. Because it is very much of a muchness, all that aqua pretty though it is. Well there's my white. <laughs> yeah, strange. Probably if I stretched it out heaps then we'd see the parts in between but I'm enjoying this aqua on this side and these lovely fronds going around look quite pretty. Yeah, I'm just stretching out this aqua a bit more. It's lovely and I might just squish down that white a bit because unless that's going to get completely stretched out, I don't know that it's that exciting. Whereas this down here is really quite pretty. Yeah, I'm not that excited by it, but it's quite nice. Yeah, it's a strange bit there. When I said look like a piece of silver, I might just give it a poke. I don't know if that's a good idea or not, but I'll just wipe my hands off. And I'm wondering, it's like it's got a black dot in the middle, whether that's... Yeah, I think it's something... There we are. Oh, I think it's got some very pretty parts to it. And you're yeah, very watery looking up here, I think. Just check my corners, they all look good actually. Looks like a Touched it with my finger there. I've got some a blob of lighter colour on it. Let's see if you can turn it around for you to see. I don't know if you can see it, but just there. So I'll just what I can do is see all this lovely part here. I'll just wipe my hands a bit more because getting quite covered. So I'll look for some paint that's similar colour to this and get my palette knife and as you push it over make sure it's not going to touch anything on the other side of it right so just here actually And down there even, so I might. Hmm. If I start from there and drag it across, it doesn't matter if it's a different colour. Just try and make it look like it's part of the natural corner, 
Oh, this colour's lovely. So you just make sure it's what you're dragging along. I'm not explaining it very well. I'm not doing it very well either. Right, I'm not happy at all with that. So I'm just blowing it off. And what I might do see what I've got in here because this is often a good way to do it. I might actually scoop up some of this put that in there and then it'll come out more evenly than me doing it with my palette knife because it's just give that a swirl in there to mix it a little bit but I don't want it completely mixed See what I'm doing, so I'm just swirling that around a bit. So you want to start off off the edge and then bring it around in the same um, half circle would naturally be on the corner. As long as they're the same colours as you've got in the rest of your painting, it should all work. I like that. That's, that's really good. All right, so something you need to do with your painting before you walk away from it is to scrape my in view. Let's scrape along underneath all the way. See all this paint that's coming out? This is another thing you can use for your corners too, is you'll get some lovely striations coming off as you do this and you can often use those for any corners that need fixing up. And we'll swivel it round and see what we've got on each of the corners. I might give it another torch in a minute too. Ooh, look at that. It's pretty. be able to fix it up here. See also, because I use the dark base, there's some of the dark base there. So yeah, I think I will actually do this corner. So again, what's in the, can you see what I'm doing? Just push it over a bit more. So I'll start from the outside edge, let it go off the canvas because what, what starts coming out of your cup is usually a thick blob. You let it run down the sides. Go around, let it run down the other side. Run down this side. Keep going.
just had enough paint. So you need to keep running your your palette knife or whatever you're using along the base for quite a few minutes. A few times, every few minutes until it stops coming off really. Because if you don't, what can happen is because this paint here weighs and the gravity is pulling it down and so therefore it's also pulling it from the top of your painting. So you don't want it all to fall off the edges, basically. Because of course, you know, it's it's thick, it's not flat and you've got no edges to hold your paint in. So you're relying on the thickness of your paint to hold it up there too, I guess. I would imagine if you're using very, very runny paint that it would come off more easily. Yeah, let me know if you've had that experience with, I'm just guessing that, I've not really thought about it before. But if your paint is thinner in consistency, it's more likely to run off your canvas more. Right, well I'll leave you there and I'll bring you in for a close-up. All right, so here it is, drawing. Take you in for some close-ups. I love this corner here. It's really pretty. You can see the gold glitter. That white, in certain angles, it doesn't look white at all. It looks more gold. Up to this corner, which I think is also quite pretty. So it's Decolite 24K gold, that paint that brings out those lovely cells. And I love these fronds going around here, I think that's really pretty. Going into this aqua, turquoise and aqua. I think it looks a bit like a turbulent sea, maybe. It looks very watery, I think, this area. I think, anyway. Do you think so? Let me know. Mind you, it's a bit purpley there, but it's really quite pretty. It's actually, yeah, it looks grey in the viewfinder, but it's actually more green in real life. Parts there that look grey. So, there we go. Let me know what you think. Also, which way round? Like, is this a good way to be hanging it, do you think? Or maybe from this direction? Try and, try and line it up. Would that be a better angle? Or... Sorry. Oh, you're getting the reflection from the lights over there. That way up. Um, or this way up. Yep, this is one I did last night. It's drying. And I may 
made some coasters actually. I'm going to be putting a video up about making coasters soon. And also these are bits of cardboard. Look, that's off a, a food thingy. Cut it to the right size, dip it. You get a really pretty, uh, I won't really call it a painting, but you can glue that onto some card and make a, a card, a greetings card for somebody. Or you could frame it actually. I mean, it, it won't last for decades. Well, I don't know, but it's not. Um, it's not on acid-free paper, but it's good for a, a little gift or something. Or a thank you card or something like that. But these hopefully will be coasters. I did that one from the paint that was left in my cup from this pour and yeah then I got a bit carried away by adding a bit more to it but these two were simply yeah it really were or mainly mainly from just what was left in the cup doing like a ribbon pour so yeah I will be doing showing you the video just a little quick video on that anyway show you what's on the table. I'm loving this. I almost poured over it again. So glad I didn't. <laughs> and yeah, here's the one I've just done. So please, if you've enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up. Thank you so much everyone who's watching. Really appreciate you watching my videos, I hope that they're being helpful. Please let me know. And thank you especially to everyone who's subscribed to my channel. Oh, it's fabulous. So, so happy. So thank you so much. And I shall catch you again soon. Okay, bye for now.